The SD70 ACU is one of the newest locomotives to start rolling down the rails, with the vast majority being rebuilt within the last few years. Norfolk Southern pioneered the endeavor purchasing older Union Pacific SD90 Max and rebuilding them at the Juniata shop starting in 2015. NS overhauled a total of 110 units and by 2019 all had been released into active service. The SD70 ACUs had mixed reviews from NS and by late 2021 almost half were sold with another 23 in long-term storage. Canadian Pacific also looked for a solution for their aging SD90 Mac fleet and in 2018 came to an agreement to have Progressive Rail rebuild 30 units to the SD70 ACU. They would go on to add another 28 units to the rebuilding process a year later. In total, CP would purchase 40 more SD90 Macs from UP, bringing the grand total to 100. Athern announced the production of the SD70 ACU in October of 2020 and dealers took delivery in January of 2022. The locomotive uses the same frame from the 90 Mac and is only a few minor tooling changes away from the SD90 Mac that was released by Athern in 2019. The SD70 ACU follows the SD90 Mac with its release into the Genesis 2.0 product line. Norfolk Southern and Canadian Pacific are both being represented in the release with the standard black horse head paint scheme for NS and four paint schemes for Canadian Pacific. Four road numbers are available for NS and six road numbers are available in the Canadian version for a grand total of 10 unique locomotives being offered. The model being showcased today is the Canadian Pacific 7022, one of the 30 original rebuilt units for CP taking delivery in November of 2019. 7022 is one of five units that were repainted to a military tribute honoring Canadian and United States military veterans. Two of the five units are being offered in the run. Canadian Pacific 7021 wears a sand color, similar to fighting vehicles serving in arid climates, and CP 7022 wears the red, gray, and black color scheme, similar to modern warships. Checking out the details on the locomotive, the first stop is the top of the cab with the several separately applied metal grab irons painted in the black color. The high LED headlight is a feature on the Norfolk Southern units, but for the Canadian models, the high headlight is plated over with some slight rivet details. On either side of the headlight plating is the LED backlit number boards located on the brow of the cab. Also below the brow are the dual front windshields, also sporting the etched metal windshield wipers, also painted in the black to match the other separately applied metal details. The top of the nose is painted to match that same black color as the striping on the side of the car body, an effort to reduce sun glare for the road crews. The top of the nose sports several details as well as some included separately applied metal grab irons and the dual sand fill hatches. The LED headlight is mounted on the nose per the prototype and is in the golden white color. The headlight is accompanied by several grab iron details painted to match the car body paint scheme as well as the front access door. One of the unit specific details for the military tribute locomotives is the front access door lock is in the center of the nose directly under the headlight. The front handrails are also well done, painted to match the battleship gray paint scheme with the white accent painting. Continuing down the front of the locomotive, the dual LED ditch lights are mounted on the pilot. These lights are similar to the headlight and have the warm white color. Between the two ditch lights are a Canadian specific unit, the MU cable receptacle. Generally mounted below the sill, Canadian railroads have preferred to mount them on the pilot. Below the anti-climber is the plastic red MU cable. This cable is the wider configuration, a road-specific detail differing from the NS units. Some of the separately applied details that include the accent painting include the coupler cut bar, painted in the hull red with the white access points, and the snowplow is separately applied with metal grab irons on top. The Canadian Pacific style snowplow is also painted that ship hull red, noted as a road specific detail. Peeking through the snowplow are the rubber MU cables. These cables are molded in a black rubber and have the end fittings painted silver. The locomotive is fitted with a McHenry scale plastic coupler and a magnetic trip pin, the standard Athern choice for couplers. Finally, the front is finished out by the dual trainline air hoses, a Canadian specific detail as well. On the conductor side of the cab, the top of the windows are fitted with the etched metal sunshades painted to match the car body. The other metal detail pieces around the windows are the wind deflectors or the side mirrors positioned just before the first glazing. The windows on the cab are tinted slightly matching the prototype and the bottom armrest portion is painted black. Just below the window is a large decal of the American flag as well as the yellow ribbon showing support to the military communities. The front handrail is a separately applied plastic component molded in the white color. The handrail accompanies the see-through etched metal side steps that lead up to the front pilot. These stairs have the safety white edge painting as well as the second to the bottom step has the step light housing details. 
The front truck is very nicely molded on and separately applied details. The molded on shock absorber springs are also painted in the black color, giving a pretty good depth to the component. The separately applied brake cylinders have the metal air plumbing detail running between the cylinders as well. It should be noted that while this model is a Genesis 2.0 product, the trucks do not feature the rotating roller bearing caps. Continuing down the length of the car body, the SD70 ACU is fitted on the SD90 Mac frame and is one of the longest 6-axle diesels on the market, leaving a large canvas for details across the board. Some of the more fine-scale details are the sanding lines on the inside and outside of each truck. The front truck axle also supports a road-specific detail and extra bracket to secure the sanding lines in place. The other sanding lines are more standard components running up under the sill to the rest of the extensive network of various plumbing and underbody piping. Towards the center of the locomotive is the gigantic fuel tank. Fuel tank so big that the sheer weight led to frame cracking issues on the Union Pacific SD90 Max and required EMD to rework the filler fuel ports to reduce the capacity from 5,700 gallons to 4,700 gallons of fuel. The actual fuel tank has several separately applied details as well. Some of the more detailed pieces include the plated off filler fuel ports, fuel level sight glass, remaining fuel filler ports, digital fuel level, and emergency shutoff kill switch. Up above the sill, the steps leading up to the conductor side of the cab are similar to the pilot mounted ones with the accent painting safety edge in the see-through metal portion. The brake wheel is accessible from the walkway on the conductor side, a separately applied piece painted to match the car body. Under the sill is the brake chain, an actual scale chain. This is definitely one of the more standout features of this Genesis 2.0 model. The chain does attach to the rear truck, and thanks to Atherin's clever setup, the body of the locomotive can be removed without disassembling the chain assembly. Towards the rear of the locomotive are the cooling components. The flared radiator section is a signature spotting feature for several SD variants, and this locomotive is no exception. The radiator section features several etched metal lift ring details as well. The other cooling components is the dynamic brake module and is the furthest rear internal component. The fan on top of the locomotive pulls the cool air outside into the intake screens on the side of the locomotive before drawing it over the dynamic resistors and finally across the fan. The three separate intake screens are all etched metal components and see-through, a very fitting detail for the Genesis 2.0 line. The rear of the locomotive looks a little unconventional from other modern diesels, mostly dictated to fit the rear sand fill reservoir in the dynamic brake housing. At the top of the rear is the printed on locomotive numbers in the military style font. Down the conductor side of the rear is several separately applied metal grab irons painted to match the car body paint scheme. Some of the intake grills for the dynamic braking components can be seen easier from the rear. These three separate intake grills are see-through and feature a slight grimy brown color to simulate dirty filters. The rear of the locomotive has a couple lighting features as well. The main one is the dual bulb rear light towards the upper middle section of the rear bulkhead. The LED lighting feature is in the warm white color and has a silver painted housing. The other lighting features are the two ditch lights mounted on the rear pilot. Like the rear light, these are in the warm white color LEDs and feature a silver painted housing. Between the two ditch lights is the rear MU cable connection that is used to connect other locomotives when the 722 unit is on the rear. On the prototype, the red MU cable is used for this task and is located just below the anti-climber. On the rear pilot, more of the standard Atherin Genesis details can be seen as well. The separately applied coupler cut bar is painted to match the hull red color and features the white access painting. Other separately applied details include the MU air cables, dual trainline air hoses, spare knuckles, and grab irons to secure the MU air cables. Moving on to the starboard side of this ship, one of the smaller details that can be seen are the lift ring details on the radiator cooling bank. These etched metal pieces are on either side of the cooling bank painted to match the battleship gray and allow the cooling bank to be more easily lifted off for maintenance. Similar to most modern diesels, the majority of the air system plumbing and main components can be seen on the engineer's side. The first of these to point out is the air dryer, a relatively small detail to be added the dryer lies between the rear truck and the fuel tank. Sitting between the fuel tank and the sill are the dual air receiver tanks with a series of associated plumbing running between the two tanks, dryer, and air spitter valves. The fuel tank details match the conductor side with a series of separately applied details. Moving from left to right, the fuel level sight glass, fuel filler ports, emergency shutoff push button, fuel gauge, and plated off fuel filler ports. 
while down here checking out the fuel tank details, it's a good opportunity to check out the electronic bell as well between the two air receivers. Continuing down the side, tucked up under the sill are the two air spitter valves along with more air plumbing details. The jacking pad on the engineer's front pad has the ACI placard as well, and up on top of the sill, the side steps are the etched metal, similar to the front and rear pilot. Up on the top of the locomotive, one of the most standout features across the whole locomotive is the PTC antenna array on the top of the cab. The array looks very nicely done with several smaller Sinclair style antennas painted in the silver, with other smaller details like the black painting and lift rings also being able to be viewed on the PTC. Similar to other SD70 variants from Athern, the cab roof is able to be removed from the top of the cab. It should be noted it is easier to remove the roof by pulling it from the rear as the front point sits below the brow of the locomotive. The interior of the cab can be exposed to install cab figures easily or install more detail parts. While on top of the locomotive, the opportunity to check out the Canadian style walkways down the side sills of the locomotive can be taken. Like the BC Rail Unit reviewed a few weeks ago, these snow grates are used on the Canadian units to help snow fall through and prevent ice buildups on the sides. The actual grates are see-through, but they're just placed on top of the side sill so the underbody details cannot be viewed from above. Back on the top, the prime mover exhaust port can be identified by the black grille in the middle of the body panels. The Nathan K3 horn can be seen just behind the exhaust port. The flared radiator section sports some nice details as well. The triple exhaust fan setup is a nice contrast to the battleship gray car body paint. The three fan units all have the plastic separately applied outer fan grills with the interior silver fan blades as well. The fourth fan unit is the dynamic brake housing fan with its etched metal grill fan blade combo. And at the absolute end of the rear is the rear sandfill hatch accompanied by a lone grab iron. Flipping the model upside down, the shell of the locomotive can be removed by removing the two coupler boxes as well as removing the two screws under the trucks near the fuel tank. With the top off, an array of wiring pops out exposing the inner workings of the model. The die cast metal chassis gives the heft of the locomotive and a longer frame body really gives some good weight to the engine as well. In the center of the frame is the classic Genesis driveline with the five pole skew wound motor and brass flywheels. The drive shaft that connects via the worm gear to the gear tower and provides power to all six axles. The scale metal wheels all pick up electricity and feed it back to the Tsunami 2 decoder settled just above the motor. The various lighting features are then routed to either the cab, the rear locomotive, or back through by the electrical pickups. The dual sugar cube speakers are also settled into place underneath the radiator cooling fan bank. Now that we've gotten a good look inside and outside of the model, we'll go ahead and give track power to check out the rest of the features on the Tsunami 2 decoder.
The SD70 ACU weighed in at 23.84 ounces or 676 grams. And this is where the longer wheelbase really comes into play. One of the heaviest models I own and definitely one of the heavier models on the market. The SD70 ACU weighed a tick heavier than the former self of the SD90 Mac and a little heavier than the SD80 Mac, all three weighing quite a bit more than most six axles diesels. The pull test was conducted for three trials and then the average was taken from these. The average was found to be 5.2 ounces of tractive effort or about 146 grams. From this test, the modelers should expect their SD70 ACU to pull about 55 standard freight cars along a level grade. The coupler heights were also measured during the test and it was found that both couplers were at the correct height. Moving on to the scoring section, the different scoring categories are shown with their respective point values. The model will be scored off these categories and given a final score in a subsequent letter grade. The packaging is the standard Genesis packaging with the generic Tsunami 2 diesel manual and the exploded parts diagram for the model. The accuracy of the model appears to be pretty well done with a large number of road and unit specific details. Thankfully, the military tribute locomotives have been photographed hundreds of times over its very short lifespan, and everything seems to be spot on. The paint scheme is probably the best feature with the modern warship paint scheme. The battleship gray and hull red paint look fantastic. Overall, the printing is very good, and the painting is very well done as well. That being said, the model does seem to have tons of very small blemishes across the model, and just seems that every small detail has either a paint or chip or something like that in it. Nothing that can be seen from normal viewing distances, but just in very close-up shots, it seems that everything has a minor little ding or tick or something, so I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. The details across the model are very well done, and Athern really nailed down a lot of the little details that took even me a while to find and notice where they were. There's a large number of separately applied details, lots of metal and wire details, and plastic details look great as well. It is a little disappointing the model does not feature the roller bearing caps as well since it was implied it was going to be rolled out in most Genesis 2.0 locomotives, but regardless the model still looks amazing and I love watching it roll down the track. The long frame and wheelbase gives a lot of chances to add weight of the locomotive and Athern did not skimp on this category. The locomotive has some pretty good heft to it and because of that the pulling power is great as well. If you owned a 90 or 80 Mac, then this locomotive will perform very closely to those, and my expectation was correct. The warm white LEDs also look great with a good brightness on all the lighting features. Similar to other recent releases, the model doesn't lack a super capacitor though, and seems to be missing that final puzzle piece to a perfect model. Overall, a 23 out of 25 for the electronics. The 40-inch scale drive wheels all provide tractive effort while providing pickup power from the rails. The wheels were all found to be engaged as well. The trucks are overall nicely detailed with good printing, molded on, and separately applied details across all four truck side frames. The McHenry plastic scale couplers were both found at the correct height, and once again, Athern continues to use the plastic scale couplers. Despite the recent market conditions, the MSRP on the SC70 ACU hasn't increased compared to the 80 and 90 Mac, but those models did see a large price increase, so we're actually getting a better deal than its predecessors. With that, the model still rings up for north of $275 with sound, definitely a healthy investment. The locomotive does check 9 out of 10 boxes for me, just falling short on features normally found by other manufacturers for this price. That being said, the model is definitely expensive and lives up very well to that price. I do have a few things on my wish list for this model, like the super capacitor, couplers, and roller bearing caps that would give this model a 100, but regardless, it is still a very premium model for any layout. Tailing up all the points, that gives a 93 out of 100, or a solid A rating. When comparing it to other recently reviewed models, the SD70 ACU fares pretty well, landing in at tied for third on the list, notably higher than its SD90 Mac and SD80 counterparts. Originally, I was not going to pick up this model as I was saving up for other pre-orders that should be arriving soon, but after seeing online photos of the actual release model, I really had to get one, and I'm very fortunate I did. For me, what really sells this locomotive is the paint scheme in that flagship unit, the CP722. I'm very excited for the other releases in the military tribute schemes, and I'm going to be eagerly awaiting the announcement from Athern. Overall, these locomotives are extremely similar to the older SD90 Max, and modelers should expect a very similar product depending on what your opinion was of that purchase. To me, it appears that Athern is at a crossroads with its product line, where they both have the Genesis and Genesis 2.0 releasing on different products every month. 
It doesn't appear that certain features are one staple of one product line, and it's more of a Venn diagram style overlapping in terms of details. I will say it's slightly disappointing that the fancy new Genesis 2.0 does not feature the animated roller bearing cap, super capacitor, or metal couplers, but we're going to have to wait on these features. That being said, I am very happy with my purchase and plan on ordering the other military tributes as well since they make fantastic models and will look great in a set and I'm going to highly recommend them to any modeler. Overall, another great release from Athern. So that's all I got for you guys right now. Let me know what you think in the comments with your thoughts on the Genesis versus Genesis 2.0 product line and where you feel that Athern should continue innovating on. It's definitely a good debate topic and we'll just have to wait and see for more announcements from Athern. With that, comment, rate, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.